Hello, everybody, and welcome to the last minute of play in the third period. We're going to start the show by talking about the University of Missouri from the SEC, the football conference to end all football conferences that has appeared on this show a whole bunch of times because of bribery in Mississippi. But this time we're going to start in Missouri, where they have announced that they are banned from the postseason next year in college football because it was revealed that a tutor that was assigned to the team was, in fact, doing 12 players' homework assignments. Oh, really? So, like, not just helping them, but, like, that's like some assignments. Yeah, doing doing their schoolwork for them so they could play football. That's like some Blue Mountain State level stuff. Do you think they're the only university that does that? Absolutely not. No. But they're, they're the, the only one who's <laughs> got caught. <laughs> they're the one who got hey, caught. Yeah. Welcome to the NCAA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And that horn means you are now in overtime on CHSR 97.9 FM here in Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada. Thank you all for tuning in uh, this afternoon at 2 o'clock. Or alternatively, you could be listening to us on YouTube since we now have vidcasts up. Mm-hmm. Johnny's getting to those as he gets to those. We were missing Monday, but it's been kind of a hectic week here. Also, Mother Nature has been whooping us. Oh, yeah. Frey gets cold. No, by the end of this weekend, we should have all the videos that uh, I'm behind on a couple of them and everything. So they should be up by the end of this weekend. So, Kitties, do yourself a favor. Listen to Uncle Kaylee. If the polar vortex is on, don't go outside in just a vintage hoodie and no gloves and no hat. Mm -hmm. That's dumb. Or an Elsa costume. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, someone in Illinois got arrested for that. We we, we got to see that tidbit before we went to air. Thanks to our guest. Our special guests can introduce themselves. Uh, Okay, wow. That's a throw. I I normally have a nice write-up for you when you're on our show. I know. Yeah, it's Ryan from uh, Against the Mat, Wednesday night uh, talk show, Against the Mat, and uh, Recap Sequence. Thanks for having me, guys. I was going to call you a culture snob out of touch with the common man. That's hurtful. Why? Because yeah. of the age difference at the current the, the, the No, just because just of the recap sequence. I call myself a, I call myself a culture snob out of touch wow. with the common man. I introduced Johnny and Sean to MXC on this show. That's <laughs> that was Still classic. Great. That show's great. <laughs> it's awesome. It's unreal. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, lots to talk about today. We're going to talk first about the Jake Muzzin trade. We'd have to. That happened pretty much right after, like like the day after you the got, day after yep, it was yep. recorded uh, when I was away. Sad. We also have to talk about Super Bowl 53, which is this weekend. Ryan's here, so we're going to talk about the Royal Rumble and the aftermath for that because tis the wrestling hour. Um, we are also going to talk about... Sean has my list today. This is so tough. I'm not. I'm useless when I'm not behind a computer. Yeah. Well, we got. Um. I don't know if you brought it up. Lowry joins Kawhi at the yes, All Star game. Yes. Talk about the All Star game and also Toronto losing to the Bucks again. Yep. Mm. Uh, Jivinko leaving TFC. Yeah. The Mavericks and Knicks trade, which is relevant, and just really, really quick because we've kind of been tracking it. We were wondering what was going to happen. Uh, Brianna Andrescu is now the highest ranked women's singles player. On the ATP, she won a challenger event this past week. We're not really going to talk about that. I'm just getting it out of the way now. So mm-hmm. people are just like, well, they talked about this two weeks ago and then never followed up on it. That's where she is. Congratulations. Yep. Also, we're going to talk about uh, Conor McGregor and Habib Nur- Nurmagomedov's suspension. Thanks for saying mm-hmm. it. Appreciate it. No problem. Good job. <laughs> it's a good thing I didn't stutter that time. Oh, Kaylee. thanks, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, where do we want to start first. Uh, let's let's start with the Muzzin trade. Like we have two Leafs fans here, and Ryan's here to cause trouble. So yeah. we'll we'll start with the Jake Muzzin trade. Sean, can you get the details of the trade up for us, please? Yep. Um, well, actually, I can probably cite it off the top of my head. Um, LA received Carl Grundstrom. He's a forward, uh, a winger, and then Sean Dursey. He's a point per game player in the CHL and a 2019 first rounder for Jake Muzzin. Jersey's a point per game overager, though, right? Over-ager. Yes. Yeah. So we're talking like Nicholas Jensen trajectory, then. Yeah. Well, also that's a point per game as a defenseman. He's a defenseman. Oh not a Jesus! Forward. Yeah. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Even as an overager, that's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. But b- the more important thing is that the Leafs didn't have to give up anything off of their current roster, which is kind of surprising that they were able to give a defenseman of Muzzin's caliber without. Doing Did you that. get anything else other than Muzzin? Or was it just Muzzin? It for was all ju- that stuff? it was just, just Muzzin. Muzzin. Okay, that's that's actually kind of fair. Yeah. But I mean, like even go like leading up to this trade, uh, the the Leafs have been telling teams captains a no go, Janssen's probably a no go. So, well, so they're not willing to subtract. W- I mentioned in passing, and I think it was aired, but I'm not entirely sure if it was one of our before or after kind of like brainstorming type sessions. Mm-hmm. But I said that I thought that Muzzin was in play, but I was sure the asking price was going to be Kadri. And I think that getting Muzzin without having to give up Kadri is excellent. Yep. Because your guys' 2019 first rounder is not going to be good. No, it's going to no. be like average second 15 rounder. 15 or above, or 15 or lower. We're probably talking 20 or Mid 20s. Um, What's his cap hit? Uh, f- uh, four four mil right five. on the dot, and that's for this year. And, and he has year. a year of term. Yeah, 
Is this going to start to push them, put them sort of at that ceiling? If they get the Matthews deal signed, if they sign Marner, they're going to be in a bit of a problem um, with what they're... Right. If they if they decide they're going to re-sign Muzzin after next year, then the crunch is going to be there because Muzzin's going to get paid. He's yeah. going to get 6-7. Here's the but. thing. Right now, I believe that their projected, their cap space that they have left for this season is $4 million yeah. at this point. So you could still make a deal for some for well, a rental, right? A lot of people were saying Gudis because Gudis' cap hit is 3.45. So yeah, but his whole cap, it doesn't matter if he's a rental. It's, just, it's the prorated amount, right? Yeah, absolutely. And um, uh, also, like, it's it seems like a crunch now, but you got to think, like, Gardner's going at the end of the season, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he's going to walk. They're, they're not going to deal, and they, they'll just let him walk. They'll take him for the run. Because, like, as good as, as he is, like, on the offensive upside, um, they have Lilligren and, and uh, Sandine coming up. And Gardner's just going to be too hot of a commodity, like or too hot of a piece on the open market when it comes to free agency. So why not try and get something for him then? I don't think you have to though. I don't. I don't. I don't think you need to because Toronto's an embarrassment of riches. Oh, well, they're an embarrassment. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should open the sweater up a little bit more, just just so people understand. Yeah. That, that, that you're talking from a place of absolute logic and reason. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so, like, there is a lot of debate, like. And it, it's kind of unsettling for myself as well. Uh, of course, letting uh, Bozak and JVR walk for nothing. Basically, like, the value of letting them walk was, like, having the cap space to sign Marner and Matthews and everything. Or like John that. Tavares. Yeah, and, and John Tavares as well. Um, the thinking is, is, like, Gardner is kind of like, okay, you get him for the playoff run. And then afterwards, you have like you have the room and everything. I guess the question that matters now, and I think it's the only question that matters, is: Are you guys now actually a contender? We're better. Like our de- defense, I still isn't like I wouldn't say it's like oh now we're like a team with like no weaknesses or anything like that. Like, but it's it's better. Like we have one more competent defenseman. Like it's it was. We made the I better. Muzzin's move. a little more than competent. Yeah. Oh, you're probably going to run into and I, and I see this, you know, playing where I, you know, in our leagues is you 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 brought Muzzin in and I saw the the practice there and he's playing with Riley who's now having to play on his off wing. Mm-hmm. It's hard for guys to transition sometimes if they're not familiar moving to their opposite side. So Riley has played on the right side <coughs> a few times. They've paired Gardner and Riley up when they were just trying to like kind of shake the lineup up a little bit. And Riley was the one moving over to the right-hand side. They're banking on Riley making the transition and then having the same dynamic he had with Hainsey, but with a younger, faster, stronger version of Hainsey. You said it right there. They're banking on him. And that's, I mean, even as a, as a Habs fan, you know, you're looking at going, okay, who are you going to have on the left side? Because they've said it every, every week. Montreal media is just as bad as the Toronto media. But they're always saying they need that left shot defenseman. We don't have one. We got to go out and get one. So it just comes down to whether Riley can adjust to playing on that side. Trade Hainsey for Weber. Not a chance. Yeah, I think I think it's like this season better than any because like Riley's of course having like a career season and everything like that. So hopefully like he's matured enough to this point where he. If can. there's going to be a year where he can transition, it's likely going to be this one. Yeah, for yeah. sure. The bigger thing though is that like, and I know you guys hate the way I, I rag on Ron Hen- Ron Hainsey. Yes, because you've been wrong about him so far this entire season. <laughs> is there's some advanced numbers that are pretty like, like. Subpar. The thing is, it's not that he's not an NHL caliber. He's not still an NHL caliber caliber defenseman. It's just giving him less minutes so he doesn't burn out in the playoffs like he did last year. Oh no! If you're, it is the question that who's the better defensive defenseman to pair with Riley? Because if that's the question, the answer is Muzzin, and no one in this room is going to disagree with you. No. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And like now, Hainsey is down on the third line with Dermot. At least that's how they've been practicing the last couple of days. They played Which I think is fine. Yeah. Because your second line is Zaitsev and Gardner, right? Zaitsev and yeah, Gardner. Yeah, you just leave them together. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I think it's just the important thing is that we added from like the top down. We didn't try to like patch up the bottom end, get like a serviceable like third pairing defenseman. We got someone that moves some people down, some pegs. Um, Muzzin and Riley could maybe even take on more minutes. Muzzin's a better defenseman, I think. It also gives you an option in, like, desperation, like, have to hold down the fort. Yeah, you put Muzzin out instead of Gardner. Yeah, and you, well, or yeah. if you, like, 
if you want to go all out defense to desperately protect the lead, you can play Muzzin and Hainsey together. You know what it also or does, something. though? Yeah. It's a safety net for when Gardner walks. So now you're going to look at a left side of Riley, Muzzin, Dermott. I, I, I think that's the idea. You, you, you want so who's that. coming up to fill that hole, though? Um, well, I think Lilligren makes the team out of camp next year. Maybe Sandine, although he would probably benefit from one more year in the minors at that point. He's also a left shot, so I yeah, mean, if you're going you for that right problem. shot. Yeah. And you can also go out and get get someone. Like, you have someone who is a serviceable defenseman at a much cheaper price. I just don't... You're talking about getting someone who's lower end, though, to fill a slot at the bottom. You can't go out and get a big name. You guys still have to sign big names. Yeah, that's true. I think yeah. you go out and you get a guy who's going to play your third, fourth... You know, your third line pairing, if you need him, just as an insurance policy, it's not going to cost very much. I mean, you see a lot of teams do that in the playoffs. It's there's n- the, the, the trade center day when they're all waiting for the big deal to happen. Like, this could potentially, other than Wayne Simmons, I think this is probably going to be the big name that moves, that moved was Muzzin. But you're going to see a whole bunch of, like, C and D list defensemen who are at the end of their contract or whatever, and they're just going to be a cheap rental for the year. Yeah. I will trade yeah. you a Luke Shen. Yeah. I have one. <laughs> oh. No, no, too many bad memories. But you, you can't forget about Panarin too with the trade yeah. talks and everything. Yeah, current rumor is Florida. They yeah. were they were just talking that there's been some movement on the Florida front. Florida, I've heard Boston, which is. Ugh, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> if Florida's top line becomes Hoffman, Barkov, Panarin, how do they not make the playoffs? How far? Um, like 12 points, like a ton. But they're going to mm. score a boatload of goals. Yeah, yeah, you score goals, but how do you keep them out? I mean, Ooh. it cut. Co- I said this when you guys had me on at the start of your seat, the NHL season, and I always said that the Habs will go as far as they can with Carey Price. Any team's going to go as far as they can with their goaltending. So, and the same applies to Toronto. Roberto Luong. Yeah. Because Freddie Anderson is – yeah, but Bobby Lou's up there at 41 now. Yeah. You know, the, and you play the games like – it. take take Kawhi, right? They're managing his time. They're managing his floor time. he's coming back from a catastrophic injury. Well, yeah, but still, even at 41 – I'm 43. I play twice a week, and it hurt. It hurts to get up in the morning at times. It's a little bit different than NHL, but like still easy. Now. <laughs> I see more shots, but it it all like you know. His point is the effort. How yeah. how Eddie how yeah. in fact that sort of doubles down on his point. Even if Lou is in perfect shape for a 41 year old, yeah, that's true. He's your playing answer. NHL games four times a week. Yeah, right? your answer is not James Reimer. That's for sure. Yeah, even the, well, and I, and, I, and to Ryan's been. point too, it's uh, it's not Ron Haynes. You want to rest. It's Freddie Anderson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he he's, he's the one backup for him right now. Garrett Sparks. Um, Sparks. Ah, uh, that's yeah. fine. Or mm-hmm. uh, I'm not sure because he hasn't. Um, Sparks is back. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Yeah. Where Where's Hutchinson then? He's uh, down the minors. He's in the minors. He's, yeah. He's down. Okay. I think he cleared okay. waivers. Yeah. Well, I'm not surprised about that. But anyway. Yeah. What do you uh, do? I'm a little surprised actually. He serves well. He's good. I mean, like he was fine when he played in Winnipeg and Colorado needs a goalie pretty bad right now. Bobrovsky. Be nice. Just saying. I d- I said this before. I don't think Columbus is going to trade him. They're like two point. They're they're a game in hand and two points away from leading the Met. They're a contender. They're not trading Bobrovsky. Yeah, but they're playing the Finnish kid instead of Bobrovsky, though. Well, I mean, I, I think that's also kind of like a taking stock in what you have. Like it's for for next year because I think they're aware that Bobrovsky's walking. He, he's he's out of Columbus next yeah, year no matter what. Bobrovsky has he's said gone. he's done. Panarin said yesterday that he's interested in negotiating with Columbus, but he doesn't want to start talks till after the season is over. And then literally the next day, you know, the rumors come out, well, Columbus is talking to Florida. So Columbus is hearing Panarin say, I want to negotiate, but I want to wait to the end of the year. And they are hearing, I'm not coming back. Yeah, yeah, that's generally what that means. Well, they're probably looking across, like, well, look at, like, Tavares or something like that, try and get something, like... Exactly. Don't, don't leak, don't have, be left hanging like the What Islanders does it matter? Were. The Islanders weren't left hanging. They're a better team now than they ever were with John Tavares. He's a mm. bum. Yeah. Yeah, but, okay, <laughs> could you could you sit there and tell me at the start of the season? No. No, yeah, no, no, no. None of us could terrible. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But it's Barzal and Anders Lee and the fact that, as we've talked about, Barry Trotz is the one true American gangster. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we didn't tell you the story about this. I don't know if you heard our show last week. <laughs> no. But when the Capitals were doing their tribute to Barry Trotz, Trotz essentially ignored the video, called his team into a huddle, and told his guys, he's like, you see what's going on up there? That's us this year. And just completely oh. ignored the tribute. It, it pretended it didn't happen. Trotz is a classy guy. I love him. Yeah. It's awesome. Well spoken. Jack Adams, yep. front runner at this point. Oh, by a lot. Be- oh, no, and no, no. Bill no, Peters and I'll, well, <laughs> Claude Julian if the Habs make it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think if Columbus I think wins so. the Met, Tortorella is going to get a nom, too. 
Mm. That's possible. Yeah. That's I also possible. see. I also think the fact that we're talking that Columbus could win the Met means they're not going to deal Panarin or Bobrovsky. Yeah. Well, that's my point. Is well, it, yeah. If you can win a division, you're a contender. If you're a contender, you don't trade a two-time Vesna winning goalie. Yeah. Did he win the second one? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. did win the second. Yep. One. The thing that's probably going to decide that is like how close, like how volatile is that locker room. Compared well, to like how it's being portrayed in the Tortorella is a disciplinarian. It can't be that volatile. And mm-hmm. now the what the Jackets have lost four in a row. So uh, tra- trade, yes. deadli- trade deadline's what three weeks away now. Twenty. 20 Vancouver's days? tied for the eighth. And there was a point this season where we lost eight in a row. Yeah. Losing streaks yeah. happen. There's a, yeah, but there's a difference. The losing streak at this time of year compared to November. It's true. You can, yeah, it's more magnificent. It was also November time. without Besser and Pedersen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now you've got Bobrovsky and, and Panarin, and you're losing four. I think yeah. I, be very curious to see what you guys say in three weeks from now when uh, when you're doing this show and you're hitting trade deadline. Yeah, where, I think where the Blue Jackets are at that point. I don't think they'll fall out. Yeah, I think our post like trade deadline show is pr- is going to be is going to be pretty decent or like the most boring show ever. I think the, I think <laughs> the fact that Muzzin went today is a sign that we're going to have the same thing we had last year, which is where all the big deals happen before the deadline. Yeah. And then the deadline day is going to stink. Plus, because I'm convinced, I'm convinced that the owners and general managers get together and say, "We're sticking it to TSN. Let's get this done first. And then we just yeah. But everybody's there. doing it now, so I'm fine with that. It could also be like the you see a lot more in the league that like it's very clear who like the haves and have nots are. So except in the Western Conference, yeah. Well, even like it's like the top of it is pretty decent and then like it drops off really significantly once drops off after there. vegas yeah pretty much what do the kings get for kovalchuk at the deadline nothing you can edmonton Sh- Sh- sean is correct <laughs> yeah how are you not calling you're edmonton not moving. like every single day like, because shirelli's not there <laughs> that's true that's true every well, gm in the league just groaned when who, he got fired is it bob nicholson who's handling I that part i don't know and i care Ooh, a, yeah. the <laughs> interim gm right now is um oh it's Ke- keith, keith gretzky keith yeah. gretzky I'd still ring them up a bunch of times trying to Why not? maybe send something to them. Why not? I will give you this slightly used defenseman <laughs> for Connor McDavid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> Seems legit. That um, one's not going to settle itself until after the season's over. McDavid? No, Edmonton. Oh, yeah. No, I, I, they, they're not making the playoffs. Yeah, no. Because you wait for the season to end, bring in a new GM, he can bring in his new coach because Hitch isn't going to be there. No. See, the, thing about it that's, the thing that's disappointing fun. is that the year that they made the haul for Larson trade, Larson had a really good season and Edmonton made the playoffs. So everyone was like, oh, my God, Shirelli's a genius. And it bought him three more years of destroying that franchise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it, that's like, it's the same blueprint that Toronto went down. It's like, oh, oh, we keep sneaking into the playoffs, finish eighth, finish ninth, finish tenth. And then you finish bottom for like half a decade. <laughs> well, you guys got derailed by the fact that all of your problems were that you would start out hot, and then once all the teams got their like video and started like, playing against you, you guys would collapse yeah. and miss the playoffs. Oh, then I'm we not had, saying then it's we, the all, then it's we had the, the lockout year. shortened season, and you guys had the first half oh, where you yeah. play really well, but didn't have the back half where you collapse, and yeah. you were like, "Oh, we're a fourth seed, or we're a five fifth seed, five seed, fifth yeah. seed in the East. We're trending upwards. We don't have to make any big moves or worry about rebuilding. We've done it." And then. Yeah. Also consider that Reimer got a heart vote that season. That's true. Yeah. Well, he played <laughs> well, really well. I mean, it, it was rightful. In fact, he played really, really well until 4-1. Yeah. <laughs> Don't remind me. <laughs> Anyways, um, should we move on to the next thing? Sure. Yeah. What do we got yep. next? Uh, next on, well, we got Rumble. Rumble? Yeah. We have Ryan here, of course. He's on CHSR's Against the Mat, your number one source for wrestling news and I don't know what the, how the rest of your intro goes. Uh, news, uh, wrestling, mixed martial arts, and yes, for some odd reason, we've now incorporated our Poly Talks a show into into that. So, uh, yeah, occasionally at the top of the hour, we do a little political chat. Yeah. Wow, that's got to be entertaining. It is. Smackdown on Trump every that's episode. That's right. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> uh. All right. I don't like jobbers. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> Royal Rumble. So the Royal Rumble happened this past weekend, as did NXT TakeOver Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Um, So that was the big show for developmental and also one of the big five now. Do we count Money in the Bank now? No, I I don't count Money in the Bank. To me, it's always the big four. Mania, Rumble, SummerSlam, and Survivor. Anyway, the start of the road to WrestleMania, Mm -hmm. and it... Well, NXT was incredible, as it typically is. Um, They put DIY back together. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, to me, the match of the night there was Ricochet against Gargano. That was to just nobody's surprise because all Ricochet has been doing for yep. the last five years is showing up randomly in various companies with a new identity and putting yes. on five star matches. Yep. Um, and then, uh, yeah. So end of the night, turns out the Gargano and Chomper back together, and everyone's cheering them like their faces, even though they're both pretty clearly bad guys. Yeah, but let's face it. Today's fan is a lot smarter than yesterday's fan. It's true. You know, very true. Then the Royal Rumble happened, and yeah. it was good, and it was good, and it was good, and then there were two very predictable rumbles. Predictable, yes. Uh, okay, for, I said to you before we started this that um, overall there were a couple moments. The men's rumble was meh. It was just it was anticlimactic. The only I thing saw I was coming. excited about was we called it on your show the week yeah. before that we thought Mustafa Ali, they would show whether or not they're committed to making mm -hmm. him like the Islamic Rey Mysterio. Yeah. And he lasted for like 30-something minutes or whatever, yeah. which made him the second longest competitor in the Royal Rumble. He now has a title match in a month at Elimination Chamber yeah. as of Tuesday. So it looks like, yeah, they're going to go forward and try to make him the Islamic Rey Mysterio, which he deserves because he's incredible. Absolutely. The guy is incredibly talented, and we're finally getting to see that on the main TV shows. The Women's Rumble itself went probably a little longer than I would have liked it to. It was longer than the men's by six or seven minutes. It was, and it hurt it a bit because there's some who, like, well, let's face it, the women's wrestling nowadays compared to in the past is, is heads and tails up yeah. at, far out and above way better. But there are still some in there that I think are shouldn't be there or shouldn't still need polish, if you will. Uh, I knew Becky. Uh, it wasn't surprising when Becky won. No. We all said it. Uh, it was how she got into it. I didn't like that. Uh, her match against Oscar earlier on was was great, uh, and but it just it didn't sit with me the way they had her just run in and beg to be let into the match. It should have just been she should have been one of the entrants or do what they've done in the past. The oh someone got mysteriously attacked backstage and then you have. Um, Becky yeah, but doesn't out, that right? sort of set Becky up to be a bad guy? Isn't She's that the man. not the angle that they the, want? They're running her as a Stone Cold Steve Austin character now where she just doesn't give a, 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 give a damn. Um, and that's what's getting her over now because they initially tried that as a, as a heel back in the summer and it blew up in their face because all of a sudden people started cheering for her. Also because her, her first speech was about like how millennials don't get wrestling anymore even though Becky's literally <laughs> younger than well, exactly. both of us. Yeah, but I mean the, the, thing, that's, the thing that turned her... The way and it will stand out to me is uh, way back WrestleMania 13. Okay, so we're at 35. Yeah. WrestleMania 13, the Steve Austin bloody picture. He gets hit in the head by Bret Hart. He's busted open. He gets put in the sharpshooter. The, he the, pushes the up. iconic one, right? Exactly, right? Becky had her moment right before Survivor Series in November when Nia Jax broke her nose and she bled. Like a stuck pig, use J.R. Jim Ross reference right there, and she's in the stands afterwards on Raw up with her hand up and just coated in blood, and the place popped huge for her. And that was it. That was the turning point right there. So I didn't like how they did this one here. And I'm not – I was talking with Drew a, few, uh, a little while ago there. The plan right now for WrestleMania is it will be a women's main event, main eventing the show. Which it should be. Well, because the other like one's long overdue. The other one's anticlimactic. It's it's um, Seth Rollins beating the guy who's never there, who God knows will end up somewhere and just with tons of money. They're either Vince McMahon or Tony Khan are going to back a dump truck full of money at the at his door and say, "Here you go, come work for us." Uh, just, but just a cartoonish amount of money. Exactly, and but. To me, I don't want to see Becky, Charlotte, and Ronda. I want to see Becky and Ronda because they had their first face-to-face -face Monday night and the place popped huge for it. Ronda's getting booed, which I think is hilarious, and I know for a fact that it's pissing Vince off just because he's booked all this money and time into building her up. I mean, like, let her get booed. Oh, yeah, let, absolutely. Th th this, you want... She's taking time off after Mania. TNA. This was the problem that TNA always had when it finally got big. You've homegrown a star. Because mm -hmm. Becky did have some pedigree before she came over to WWE, but not anything that people would recognize. Nope. You homegrew a star. Mm -hmm. And the golden child that you brought in afterwards, who has all this pedigree and attention behind her, is now the bad guy? Let her be the bad guy. Absolutely. Let it be. Let it play out. She's going to go off. She's taking a hiatus after Mania. Her contract is signed. She's signed through till 2020. Uh, but she'll come. My, what we want to see is her to come back just after August when the new TV deals because Fox when they put their TV deal uh, their TV pitch to WWE to we want to do Smackdown was they walked in the room and it was Ronda Rousey 
she was the face at that point for Fox, and it makes sense because Fox wants to pull a more sports-oriented pro wrestling show with SmackDown Live. So bring Ronda in, boom, there you go. She can come back as a baby face. Take her off for a while. Yeah, there's just no logic to yeah. There's n- There's no sense in fighting it because... It does. If you fight it, it's not going to matter. No, exactly. they fought the crowd hating Roman for years he and tr- never exactly. got it anywhere. No. E- even when Roman was doing good work, people booed him yep. because booing him is what crowds did yep. at that point. Yeah. Uh, the only other thing from the Rumble to me, well, uh, Daniel Bryan's match against AJ Styles was was fantastic. Loved it. Daniel Bryan's promo, which I still have not had a chance to see before the show, where he stomps on the uh, Rumble Burger that the uh, uh, Diamondbacks created for this one thing, was priceless. I mean, but the thing for me was Tuesday night, the Hemp Wood title that he has now was just so gold. great. It was absolute gold because. Oh, I guess we. See, this is the best part about doing this show because these two don't watch. Royal Rumble right. was supposed to be their first pay per view of me getting them into wrestling, and of course, I had to leave, right. so we didn't get to do that. Daniel Bryan, yeah. um, I've shown you guys wrestling isn't wrestling, which I'm assuming yep. you've seen. Yeah, I'm assuming like the you haven't seen that no. video. Oh, okay, you so have, good. You have got to watch that video. Okay. You in particular would appreciate. So it. I'm assuming like the hemp belt, it's like made out of like some sort of like the straps are hemp and the hemp. main part is wood. It's made yeah. of wood. Okay, so it's basically playing on the part it's that hand he looks carved. like a bit like a like a caveman like hipster no. type thing. Hip, hipster like, vegan gnome he's type. He's a known yeah. vegan. He's mm-hmm. he's. Essentially what's happened is they decided after he was essentially a good guy forever, he made his big comeback after essentially having his brain scrambled, um, that they were going to turn him into a bad guy. And the bad guy character that he's playing is Eco Warrior. We are all terrible people because we eat meat, even though meat's harm more harmful to the environment than... He is the you know, planet's gr- champion. Yeah, he's the planet's the champion. Planet's so champion. the thing that he did on Tuesday after he beat AJ Styles, who we've talked about, probably my favorite wrestler of all time... Mm. Um, after he beat AJ Styles at the Royal Rumble and retained his title, on Tuesday he threw the metal and gold and jewel encrusted belt in the garbage and brought out his new Eco Championship, which has a hemp belt, wooden plates. Uh, instead of it's jewels, gorgeous. it's all I mean, it's like it's card. all like shells cool. and uh, like other like, oh, like it's, stones it's and priceless. stuff. It's it's great. It looks really good. It fits the gimmick really well. Custom titles for jerks is a great aesthetic yep. for wrestling. Yeah. That sounds fantastic. That's unreal. Oh, it, it is. I mean, and it's it's all about, you know, how they can redefine their character, and people are really loathing him right now. And it, oh, really? it, wor- it works. So then that means people are getting behind these characters. So. And the thing that people don't really consider about it in the long run that, you know, we really should is that, well, Raw is allegedly the flagship program for WWE. Don't say it. You'll get a chance in a second. Um the best wrestlers, pretty much bar none that the company has, are all on SmackDown. Becky Lynch and Charlotte are your two best women's wrestlers. They're both on SmackDown. Daniel Bryan, AJ Styles. Um, they took the best person that they had from their Cruiserweight show, 205 Live, Mustafa Ali. They put him on SmackDown. The sec- the second tier people that, that are getting like good press and coverage from people, Shinsuke Nakamura, Rusev. Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe, R-Truth, and Carmella, all on SmackDown. So Raw's roster has like the name power in that it has Brock Lesnar, it has Seth Rollins, Rollins, Roman Reigns is out because of illness, but Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, so all the S.H.I.E.L.D. guys, even though they're all on that show and they're capable of being the top guys, right now they pretty clearly aren't. Oh, I haven't watched Raw probably in a year. That's why I was telling him to stop. I watched watched SmackDown. One, because it's two hours. And in Raw is two, horrifyingly three, but that's not now. In fairness to World Wrestling Entertainment, it's not their fault. This is USA to this is USA Network who says we are giving you a three-hour slot. You're putting on a three-hour show. We're going to pay you for it. You're putting it on two hours. I find they can compress it down. You get uh, you know very uh, well crisp storylines. You get good pro wrestling on there, and you don't have to see people who aren't ready for that main roster. That's the problem with Raw. I find I just I can't watch raw anymore because i'm not behind any of the guys who are on it um you know no and not in fair I, I am a huge fan of seth rollins but i mean other than than that there's not many on there right now who are doing anything but to me i, I we, we'll see the shake up probably come after mania where they're gonna switch uh, have people switch rosters and stuff like that which they do every year just to sort of freshen things up my guess will probably be if we don't see it after mania we will see it right after SummerSlam, right before the two new tv deals kick in SmackDown Live goes to Friday nights on Fox Live. And Raw stays on Monday nights with uh, USA. And Ronda changes over because I think she'll change. Right. I think she'll change over to it, and that's where you bring her back to come full circle. She'll come back as a baby face. But um, yeah, so that's yeah. that's sort of something. Daniel Cormier's fifth job allegedly. 
Yeah. <laughs> he's doing FWE. Um, uh, one last thing, then we'll move on. Is Buddy Murphy WWE's best kept secret right now? Because that Cruiserweight title match at the Royal Rumble was great. I, again. You know what? There's, I feel like we say this every month, though. Buddy Murphy, Pete Dunne, all of these guys that we don't see on a regular basis. I mean... One hour show. That thing you said about the two hour show, but even shorter, right? You, well, here's here's the difference, though, for me. with The, the, the one hour show is who puts it together, and that's Paul Levesque, Triple H. He is responsible for NXT. He is responsible for putting all of this together with his little team. Vince has nothing to do with that. Vince is very involved with Raw. Not as much involved with SmackDown, and it's showing because I watch more SmackDown with it. And really, at 74 years old, I think it's time to... I mean, this is the whole reason why Dean Ambrose is leaving. You know, he turned down a five-year, million-dollar-a-year contract, plus any merch that he would get because, not because of the money, because of creative. So, if you really want to get these two into it, have them watch Mania. There's, I mean, oh yeah, no, that's it's, happening. And prep yourselves, boys. When does Mania happen? That, that's April, it's, right? It's April, yeah. April. So April. Pre- prep yourself because it's a two-hour pre-show followed by a six-hour main show. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Really? Yeah, it's, it's eight an eight-hour show. So, so it's just long, nonstop. That's got to be I think, the longest. I think that's the longest is, one. Mania is the now. longest. Uh, All the other ones are usually six. It's four hours and then two before. Well, the, main, the, the big ones. The big ones are, are four hours plus the two pre. Uh, the other the ones, other ones are, are five two hours. and three. Two and three, yeah. So what are, like, the big s- kind of storylines that we can look to now? Okay, so now that the Royal Rumble's happened, we're on what they call the road to WrestleMania, mm-hmm. which is because the Royal Rumble winners automatically get main event matches at WrestleMania. So they Becky get Lynch to choose, the- They get to choose whichever champ they want to go against. Becky Lynch won the Women's Royal Rumble. She, she said, I want to fight Ronda Rousey, yeah. which makes sense. Then on Tuesday, we saw Becky's big rival, Charlotte, that's just Charlotte Flair, Ric Flair's daughter, mm-hmm. uh, come out and essentially be like, you and I still have stuff going on. You're not going to run away from me and go fight Ronda. Uh, so it looks like they're setting up that maybe all three of them are going to fight. I hope not. Me and Ryan are <laughs> desperately hoping that's not the case. Um, Roman's out with leukemia. Dean Ambrose is doing something He'll terrible. He'll be jobbing until after Mania. So. But, uh, so what they've decided to do is they've decided to push Seth, Seth Rollins, Rollins and Brock Lesnar for the belt. Because so, Brock's done after Mania. He has no new deal at this point. I think that what he's on currently is a short-term deal because uh, potentially, I mean, there's no deal with the – he's sitting his USADA suspension right now. Yeah. But uh, um, that they only have the main two matches set right now. I'm hoping it's just Ronda and Becky. I don't want to see a triple threat. But I believe also it will be women that will main event WrestleMania for the first time ever in the history of pro wrestling, which is huge. The next two shows that come up, Elimination Chamber in February and then Fastlane in March – uh, is just basically they start building up the other matches at that point. We'll find out who's going to fight Daniel Bryan for the title. and Assuming then, it's still Daniel Bryan because Elimination yeah. Chamber is going to happen before that. There is a pay-per-view in between. Yeah. Um, fast, li- fast Lane in March. There is a is rumor- there like a two-week turnover from Fast Lane to WrestleMania? Yeah, two or three weeks. Most of main like the actual card is already the, done. Like the main, yeah, card, they've decided. They've, we just they've don't had know. Everything. We just don't know as spectators. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what we'll see is they'll slowly start building up the main card matches and then filtering everything in, and we'll probably see a couple of grudge. There is a report that came out to Sports Illustrated that said that Ronda and Becky is is a go, not necessarily going to be Charlotte now, and that they'll do Charlotte and Ronda at Fastlane. Okay, that's which sort I'd of be makes absolutely sense. fine with. But yeah, so we'll sort of see. Um, there's still sort of there's still some remnants from the Daniel Bryan AJ Styles thing, so we'll see how that goes. But what happened on Tuesday was literally all of the guys that had any stake to being the number one contender came out and said, "Hey, oh. we should be number one contender." And then their decision was, "Well, the six of you are going to have one match for the title." So, actually, the Chamber's a good show if they wanted to jump on that one. I've always been a fan of the Chamber. But they'll uh, what we'll likely see there is we will likely see someone in the Elimination Chamber because Daniel Bryan's the bad guy, so you. you generally want the trajectory of good guy beat bad guy at WrestleMania because it makes people happy. It doesn't always happen, but I imagine what you'll see is you'll probably see someone either get screwed or something at Elimination Chamber. That'll set up that storyline, yep. whoever they want it to be. Like, hot bets AJ, but Samoa Joe's been doing really good work. I don't think it'll be AJ. I think at this point they're going to move on to someone else. But we'll see. Um, for Raw, you know, there's a whole bunch of other stuff. There's the Intercontinental Championship. It looked like from Monday that they were going to try to set up Dean Ambrose and Triple H, but if that was the plan, I think that's gone now. Well, no. Uh, if they do run with that, it wouldn't surprise me because uh, Dean gave his note. He talked to them on the weekend. So they knew going into the Rumble that he was done. Okay. Even before that. like They just didn't tell anybody until Monday night. 
Anyway, we got about 20 minutes left, so we'll move on to UFC. Can I ask you guys a quick question yeah, here? Go for it. This is sports related, actually, not pro wrestling at this point. Okay. I, I want to get your opinion. I was watching uh, PTI yesterday, and they came out and announced that uh, Jerry Jones, who I think is a schmuck, uh, <laughs> said he is not signing Jason Garrett now to an any extension, that now going into next season, he's basically a lame duck coach. It's talk. Yeah, it's just, it's just banter. That's the thing is I don't – Jerry Jones is saying that for the sake of leverage because you can't pretend that you that Jason Garrett doesn't deserve an extension after last season. Well, he even said it before that that he was going to sign him to an extension even before uh, – wasn't it? I think it was right around when they clinched. This was even before their their playoff game. It's, it's, it's talk. All right. Jones knows he'll get a live microphone and coverage. And yeah. if the media appearance is, well, you're screwed, Jason Garrett, Garrett might be convinced to take a cut. Okay. How did you guys feel about the good uh, Roger Goodell's little press conference? Uh, which one? Well, the one, his state of the league. I mean, like, the state of the league's a joke. Yeah. I, I <laughs> literally, I don't think I've watched the last three of them. I don't even watch them. I every just, year, I just every the year it's the same. And the thing with it this year is that this year the issue for most of the season has been officiating, right. and he barely talked about it. I mean, he did come out and say they made the officials made mistakes. Sure, but that's that's nothing. Officials make mistakes every single game of every every single game of sports ball you've ever watched. An official has made a mistake. But is this league the worst one for like officiating officiating issues? I can think of at least one playoff game where they were the worst one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, um, I think they didn't they have like a court appeal or something like that. Yeah, to have like that part of the game. The fans replayed? tried to, yeah, Fan, yeah, yeah. yeah that, was, that'll never happen. Yeah, no. that, was, that happens dive. every single time. Yeah. There was a court appeal in Montreal to have Zidane Chara brought in front of Quebec oh, courts oh, on yes. assault when he hit Patrick oh, when he hit Patrick yeah. with a stanchion. Oh, yeah. That was uh, that. That might have been the ugliest hit I've ever. But seen, it was clean. Sure. Oh well, oh, was, I mean, it might have been interference. The, I'm talking more about at best. It's more about the result. Like, I know, but my, my my point is that fans do this kind of garbage all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no surprise. It was like the Vancouver fans that tried to get. Oh my God! When Lucic was coming up as a free agent, he announced that there was no chance he'd play for Vancouver. So a bunch of Vancouver fans tried to find get a witch hunt to find the four fans that poured beer on Lucic's parents, and they were gonna like parade them through the streets naked or whatever. Oh God! Oh, that's awesome. That's some tribal stuff. <laughs> fans that's kind of fans excessive. bad. Fans bad. Fans bad. Fans are crazy. Sport good. Man. Fan bad. Yeah. Uh, Conor McGregor and Habib yeah, Nur- Nurmagomedov. Fighters bad. bad. <laughs> um, UFC this it's bad. bad. This is, this is, yeah, speaking of a joke. <laughs> oh, have you been listening to our show? Did you do you know the whole John Jones saga? Listen, We've covered the I, whole I, thing. I enjoy because I, I do try to catch your show as much as I can because I'm on the road quite a bit. And if I'm in the area, either well, Mondays I had no idea until I heard the one show, and then Fridays I always try and catch. But I always know whenever we invite you to come on to Against the Mat, I always might try to make sure I can slide a, a John Jones uh, thing in there because I, I, I've heard you countless times on this show. It's like just one of them will say something and it's like you hear the countdown. Three, two, one. Well, pop, it's such an go. easy top yeah. to spin. You just go, <laughs> you, 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 It's because he's a like cheater. A baby later. <laughs> it's because he's a cheater. We have evidence that he's a cheater. And the fact that the UFC is going to such great lengths to try to whitewash the fact that he's a cheater is embarrassing. Yep. That's he tested cheating. positive again after the title fight. Yeah. No further discipline. Oh, I know. Yeah. Here comes the money. So are you saying the, the six months for both? Well, six for Connor. Nine, nine for unless Khabib, you do the whatever. PSA of uh, anti-bullying there. Which he'll do. I, I mean, no, he's, is I, that he too said much? no. He's not doing it. Did he say no? <laughs> yeah, he said no. Oh, my did. God. I love him so much more now. <laughs> so now he's not eligible to fight till July. Yeah, he said he's not doing that. He, and, and because they um, they fired the guy from his camp that came into the ring, he said he's not fighting in Nevada anymore. Like, he won't do cards in Las Vegas anymore. Nice. Well, wow. Him. Yeah. Him, get, him, like, it should be the, it should be the same. But him does he have a choice? Equally responsible. What? Does he have a choice oh, yeah. where he's going to fight or not? Because uh, if the UFC turns around and says you're def- you're the champion, you're defending this belt here, they would have to strip him because he's not because he's not willing to fight in Nevada, and the UFC would not risk the press for that. No, because Khabib's arguably the most dominant champion you have. Yeah, yeah, you can't do that. Oh, sorry, sorry. 
most dominant clean champion you have. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it won't yeah, fight until it? nine months is over. That's fine. Yeah, so that puts it at November, I think. Good for him. For him to come no, back. his uh, his nine months. Uh, was you have to remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right retroactively right dated to the okay, date of the he'd incident. Be yeah. He'd be able so to it's fight like July. July. Mm-hmm. Which is fine because yeah. fighter because a fighter of Khabib's caliber who's fighting for the title all the time takes six months off between fights anyway. So Khabib's missing one payday and one title fight has to be postponed three months. The UFC will postpone that fight yeah. for three months. Mm-hmm. So I always get here. You guys give a couple of digs at him. So I just figured I'd take the chance because I just saw it here. And John Jones actually says he feels vindicated after vigorous testing this year. That's good for him. Good. <laughs> we all we all know that he's a cheater. It's fine. Yeah. Pico Graham. I, my favorite word. I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm allowed to hate him. Do you hate him more than Connor? No. 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 I. Uh, I, I would have been. Pushing I would have been totally okay with all of Connor's antics up to this point, if, and here's the big if, if he didn't have a, an Escalade escape vehicle parked outside, <laughs> if he had gone in there to attack Khabib knowing full well he was going to get arrested, I would have been like, you want to know what? That's Connor being Connor, man. My problem with it was that he brought six guys and essentially planned on doing pulling a mob hit on a guy. Yeah. Disrupted Fair. a massive supercard. Injured a couple fighters that I genuinely oh, like. Yeah, yeah, that that was when they um almost the, cost the, Ray Borg his eyes. Yeah, yeah, the the yeah. shard of glass or whatever in Borg's eye. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. still didn't derail my favorite fa- female fighter on the roster because Namajuma's won anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Connor's Yay. a punk. John Jones is a cheater. Who else do we not like on this show? So throw them both in the cage. Let them go at it. Oh God, can we? <laughs> no, weight classes. Darn. No, wait. Yeah, wait. Ah, uh, you really think that's gonna stop them? They're gonna try and do Lesnar and Jones. Yeah, but that's technically just heavyweight to light heavyweight. Well, yeah. you're going to cheer on Lesnar that night, won't you? I don't know. Oh, my. Uh, no, Lesnar's also a cheater. No, in that in that <laughs> scenario, I'm just hoping that like they both simultaneously knock yeah. each other can, out. Can, can we get an evacuation warning in just before the event so that none of the crowd goes in and have a meteor strike the stadium? Is that possible? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you really <laughs> have a hate on for them, don't you? I especially hate Jones. Wow. Like because if the, you have to understand, Connor is an absolute turd. But at least he owns it at every opportunity. <laughs> That's fair. John Jones is a cheater. We know he's a cheater. In addition to a cheater, he's a genuinely scummy human being. Hit and run that broke a pregnant woman's arm. Stuff like that. We know that all of this is on his record, and John Jones insists that he's a clean fighter and a stand-up member of society. No, you're not. Get lost. Wow, it's, it's something to hear it on the radio and then actually to be in yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah. Oh, it's something so, else. It's oh so, man, it's no! So, it's you so you've awesome. missed all of the best ones because there's been a couple of times where we've just gone off the air and I've gotten on something, and then me and Johnny will have a debate, and Johnny will just flip me the bird and leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> we should like, I should like supercut like all the time. Like we we got to get a couple more of them in like on video and everything like that, and then I'll just make like a volume one supercut of all the times that we get you to spout off about Jones. <laughs> That'd be pretty good if you just did all of my angriest moments. You get a good solid fifteen minutes from UCF being left out of the playoffs last year. Oh. But we don't have that on video yet, so you could oh, probably start yeah. a whole podcast on just me trashing and John rants. Jones. Yeah. yeah. Oh, don't, oh, a podcast on just trashing John Jones. I probably could. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No. And every single time that he fights, I hope he loses. Mm-hmm. I hope he loses every fight he has from now until he retires. So do you want to see Dan Cormier, John Jones 3? Yes. yes. Because a- I don't think weight. Cormier got a fair shake at any of those opportunities because I don't care how clean they say John Jones was. He wasn't clean. Yeah. And at heavy they, f- where they, they found evidence that he might have been microdosing. Then you saw it went to three secondary experts to get proof of testimony on whether or not they thought John Jones should be banned for possibly microdosing. All three experts said that they didn't think he should be suspended and then Ariel Helwani found out that all three of those experts used to work for USADA. (laughs) (laughs) This is why me and Johnny get so mad about this is he's so... This is like Donald Trump corruption levels of cheating. Speaking of which, um, we need to send you the clip of Dana White and John Jones bullying. Oh yeah, harassing a female reporter and, for and, calling Jones out, and, and then later Ariel when Ariel stood up for the female reporter. Yeah, I read yeah. about that. This is fun to watch. Wow, I've never seen you get like this animated before, like that. This oh, it's great. Can't stand the <laughs> it's man. Great. I can't. Like again, like I said, my biggest problem. It's like Brad Marchand. Ugh. 
Do I can tolerate Brad Marchand. Do not utter those words. Or sorry, yep. I can't tolerate Brad Marchand because Marchand pretends that he's not as bad as he is. He's but me and Johnny have had this argument a bunch of times. Who is an NHL pest that I love that you can't stand? Brendan Gallagher. I love yeah. Sean Avery. Why? Because Avery was always Why? unabashedly willing to admit that he was an absolute... Dirtbag? Yes. <laughs> and I would rather that to someone who denies it a hundred yeah. times out uh. of a hundred. It's why I hated Alex Burroughs when he had a Canucks uniform on. Because he was an absolute rat, but he would never admit it. Yeah, um, that's... Give me Avery over Burroughs a thousand times out of a thousand. See, that's that's probably the thing I disagree with you the most on. Because I, I don't... Like the minute Sean Avery started doing, like as soon as the sloppy seconds thing, oh, I guess that was okay. The thing no, that I, uh, for the record, individual incidents, I have a lot of problems with. I think the sloppy seconds thing is like extra tasteless. He he, he never played after that, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, no, 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 he, yeah, he, he played like his, another his, three or four seasons. They even yeah. sat him for that his, game that night against Calgary because yeah. friggin' well, he got suspended the, for four. After it started that. with the French comments because yeah. he was with LA at that point, and I <laughs> saw him when he, they played Montreal that year. Yeah, and I mean, and then it was the sloppy sec. No. No. I got to ask you guys oh, on this. Oh, and then him because... mocking Brodeur about his affair? Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Wait, what? You guys... That's why Brodeur wouldn't shake his hand during the Stanley Cup final. Sean Avery parked himself in front of Martin Brodeur and asked Brodeur how he was doing since his affair. Uh, for yeah. 60 minutes. Yeah, yeah, and then that he was told... when he was standing face <laughs> yep. and waving the stick. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Which, by the way, there's nothing wrong with that, and it drives me nuts as a goaltender because it's happened to me before where guys just stand in and try to do it, and then they get the puck shot in, the, in their back, and they suddenly realize how much it hurts. Yeah, I made it a penalty in the NHL. Cool. Every le- the, the NHL has their pests. Yeah, but I'm curious, Brad Marchand or Brendan Gallagher? Oh, Brendan. Gallagher. Are we talking? About, are we talking about who would I rather have on my roster? Yeah, Marchand. Marchand. Really? Yeah. No, Why? Mar- Marchand's a because better he's player. He's a higher skill player, and he's a better pest. He's, he's better than Gallagher. A bag. In, he's a yeah. he's better than Gallagher in both aspects. I'll take Gallagher. Thank you. Wow. If For once we're going to agree on something, I don't know. <laughs> I will say this definitively: if the Leafs signed Marshawn, I might stop cheering. I would love him. I'd love I, him then. I, I no. might, I you love might him if you have him. my Leafs jersey. No, no. To, if I got to try to find this video. There's an old video about Sean Avery, I'm about adding Sean about Avery that. to oh. adding Sean Avery to a roster that was entirely about before 2011 when Vancouver picked up Rafi Torres. Allegedly, they were originally in the run to get Sean Avery. They ended up getting Torres instead, which I didn't have a problem with. Torres had a perfectly good season, and with the exception of him deciding that Brent Seabrook's head was a fancy thing to <laughs> put an <laughs> elbow into. Otherwise, had a really, really good playoff for the Canucks that year. But like that, there was a debate about the Canucks picking up a pest and not explicitly a goon, and the debate was who would be a better fit, Torres or Avery. I wanted Avery. Everyone should have wanted Avery. Why? He's not that good a player. He never was. He got under everybody's skin. Yeah. It didn't matter. He, he dropped you penalties. Gallagher gets under everybody's skin, but he scores goals. Sure, but at the time, you didn't need to do both of those things. You could be a pest for the sake of being a I pest. I think now now you do, though. Sure, which is why I'd pick Marchand, who's better yeah. at scoring goals than Gallagher. He he, he tops out at, like, what, 85 I'm sorry, points? sorry, my dude. It's true. Oh, but the, the, here you got a guy who's going <laughs> to turn all, around and spear you? Also, also local connection, because he's from... To oh, I don't uh, care. Scotia. I could care less. That, that's why I'm kind of like cautious in traffic. Like if I'm ever driving around Halifax, because I don't know if I would be able to control myself if I saw oh, Brad no. Marchand walking I on speed the sidewalk. Up. You see a lot of Brad Marchand jerseys in Halifax. I mean, that's, uh, that's not the point. He right? might want to keep on driving. He might lick you. <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> yeah. Got about nine minutes left. I think we've got one more big thing to talk about. Two, I guess Super Bowl 53. Yeah, Super Bowl 53. So Patriots and the Rams. Um, go Rams. Go Rams. I, I, I want to watch the commercials. That's it. Yeah, I, yeah, have, no, yeah, I, really. I have no interest in the Super Bowl. Nope. Because the Rams don't deserve to be there, and the Patriots being there is boring. And it's the exact Patriot. opposite of last year's Stanley Cup Finals, where we all agreed that the Finals were the most fun they've been in a very long time. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is the exact opposite of you that. Because you get a Cinderella story either way. Here, it, I don't blame the Rams for being where they are. That's not their fault that the referees oh, couldn't no, no, make no, no. the call. So. I don't, but me as a fan, I don't want to see them win for that same reason. See, I, I want them to win because I can't stand Tom Brady. I'm over it. I've you have to understand. I've gone picture the circle. I've gone so far to the fed up with Tom Brady that I've kind of looped back around to the not caring about Tom Brady. Yeah. 
especially like he's kind of doubled down on the hatred for him, especially in the last like two weeks, like with all the press conference stuff. That oh he's yeah, been doing. why wouldn't oh, you? Yeah. yeah. To be fair, the friggin' the Ram safety who should have had the penalty called against him uh, did a presser where he said, you know, good for Tom to still get back to the Super Bowl, but he's old and he's not that good anymore. Okay, that's, oh, that's dear. just dumb. Why would you do that? That's going to come back. <laughs> Don't and say that. Exactly. Yeah. It doesn't matter. We've already said jinx. that Tom Brady's virtually unbeatable because, you know, he has a Madden uh, glitching 105 clutch stat, and if you have a lead going into the fourth quarter, you're doomed. Unless you're playing the Giants. Giants never had the lead going into the fourth quarter. Didn't matter. He couldn't beat the Giants in two Super Bowl appearances. Yeah, that required a miracle catch by Tyree and then a bigger miracle catch by Manningham. Still happened. Yep. Mm-hmm. And he couldn't beat him. He's five and three. I will give him his due. He's five and three in the Super Bowls. He's go he's now he has now appeared in three more Super Bowls than any other quarterback. If he wins this year, he will have more wins than any other quarterback in NFL history has, has Super Bowl appearances. Mm-hmm. Is Gronk retire? If they win another ring. Yeah. How, long did take, how long did it take him last time to decide whether he was coming back? I mean, that guy's got to be banged up like nobody's business. How old is he? He's not that old. No, these, we, it's funny. We say old and the guys are like their early 30s. Yeah. I don't think Gronk's Or obviously we're saying that in the context of like what sports. Well, yeah. any sport, right? It's like... I've, Dude, I th- we, we, are talk, we are talking old and most of the guys are my age and <laughs> half of them are younger than Ryan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah freak. Yeah, I mean... Old that, is relative. But that's just the sport, right? You're getting yeah. smacked around all the time. You're smoking your head off sport. stuff. It's sort of the funny thing, like when me and Sean are covering college hockey and we have to say, you know, you know, like an old player for there. Well, a fifth year player in on a college team is what, twenty <laughs> three? If that, like my age twenty two. It's all relative, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'd I'd rather see the Rams win because I think it's more interesting than Brady winning, but I can't get over the fact that like the referees missed three different calls on oh, the I same know. play. I thought you that, said two. What's the third one? There was a, allegedly there was also a hold. Oh, allegedly, okay. but I don't know the for pass sure. Pass interference and helmet to helmet, really. Yeah, because that's the thing on. is even if, we said this last week. Even if you didn't consider it pass interference, which it was because mm-hmm. he didn't turn around to play the ball. Yep. It was still an illegal helmet to helmet hit to a defenseless receiver. Even if you don't call pass interference, you have to call the uh, – not roughing yep. the passer. That's helmet the quarterback. The, the helmet-to-helmet hit. I forget what they call that, though. Uh, unnecessary roughness. Yeah. You have to. And the thing is, people yeah. are just like, that determined the game. Well, the roughness penalty would have only given the no, Saints technic- 15 yards. Yeah, right? but it would have given them first down. They could have run the clock out then and won it. I mean, yeah. the, the Saints, they also didn't do themselves any favors letting the Rams back into the game. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely you know, not, because so, the Rams had, what, like 50 yards of offense in the yeah. entire first half? Yeah, it's a double-edged sword. Yeah. Patriots, on the other hand, like, that's the thing. Again, you can have that debate about the Chiefs game. I even said it when I was on your show on Wednesday. Edelman muffed that punt. That touchdown makes a huge difference if the yeah, Chiefs get okay, it. Okay, but roughing the passer, give me a break. I'm just going to put my hand on your shoulder, and that's roughing the passer. Oh, yeah, no, and that was a terrible, that was a terrible call, too. There were several terrible calls. Reffing has been egregious this year, and the definition of roughing the passer, which now includes intent as a characteristic, as if you can <laughs> tell that. He's looking at him intently. We, we've, like, we've had this talk, too, about like relevant games. Houston against Indianapolis, the first round of the playoffs. You know, J.J. Watt gets in and hits Andrew Luck, and they called him for roughing the passer. There was nothing about that play that would indicate that it was roughing the passer. When Houston played the Eagles in a game that was absolutely critical because it would have been a first-round bye for Houston and not having to play Indianapolis at all. And, you know, they break through the line. They get a hit on Nick Foles. And because Nick Foles got raised off the ground like two inches, yep. roughing the passer because you lifted him in the air. He didn't lift him into the air. He had to swim under the arms of the defender and that come up to Foles. should be a penalty on the offensive line for letting the guy through. It's dumb. I know. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, that's what they decided roughing the passer was this year. So, I mean, but before we move on, um, I just want to point out, remember a few weeks ago when I said it's inevitable the Patriots win? And yeah. then we said it's possible that they don't make the Super Bowl? Yeah, I mean, uh, it good was times, possible right? they don't I make mean, the Super Bowl. <laughs> I mean, anything's possible, right? Like, so are you saying I'm, Brady still? Are yeah. you sticking with that? Pats to win? I think you I, have I, I, to. I think I they do win. Do I to. want them to? I mean... <laughs> That's a different answer. Should there be a betting line um, for whoever the head referee is for that game for Super Bowl MVP? 
can we can we just bet? Can we bet on that? No, you should see the betting lines. <laughs> so this morning before I came in, I was watching CNN. They were doing – there's betting lines right now as to whether – the first point scored will be a lot faster than uh, the uh, uh, singing of the national anthem. Uh, there's oh, there was That's a, great. Oh yeah, there was, there was a second one about uh, comparing the ages of the two coaches. Who's going to win first or score the first points? Oh, it's it's, it's incredible what you can bet on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <coughs> uh, three minutes left. Uh, Lowry's uh, going to the Ra- with uh, Kawhi to the All Star game, but the Raptors still can't beat the Bucks. Mm, it's regular yep. season. Antetokounmpo, though, uh, yeah, God, you, you still have to, to beat him. Yeah, the he, guy's he's, a beast. Yeah, we're totally getting LeBron to the first year that LeBron's not in the East. I saw something that what, the Lakers have like a twenty percent chance of making the playoffs. Yeah, because they started out the season terribly. Yeah, how bad would it be if LeBron moves to another conference and misses the playoffs, and the Raptors still can't get to the finals? Well, I mean, they they wouldn't face it him until the finals anyway. Because he's that, in the that, West. But, but that, that's what I mean. You mean still don't get there? Yeah, still, yeah. still can't get it done. Especially after you went out and got Kawhi. Who might not stick around. Who might not even stick around. He stick around. He's gone. I don't know if that's true. Well, I mean, unless there's something. I, I, I think anything short of finals, he's out the door. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Anobi's going as well. I can't forget that. He's in the um, Young Stars game there or whatever. Yes, he did get chosen for the world team for Young Stars. I keep forgetting that he's from Africa, even though, you know, it. it's something that you you think you would remember, but not typecasting. I t- sort of <laughs> assume that most of my black NBA players are from America. Are, are you going to watch the, the special televised team drafting that they're doing this year? They're actually going to televise uh, LeBron and... Uh, um, Oh my gosh, Giannis, Greek, yeah, Andrew Kumpo picking the two teams. Yeah, I think that's fun. I liked when the NHL actually did that for a couple All Star games. That was the first. That was like the only three years I genuinely cared about the All Star games, <laughs> except for the first year that they did Team North America versus Team World. I thought that was really cool the yeah. first time. Mm-hmm. No, that was kind of cool. A uh, minute and a half left. Uh, I'm going to gloat a little bit because the Dallas okay. Mavericks New York Knicks trade. Um, the Knicks traded everybody of value to the Mavericks for a whole bunch of the future, and I'm hoping that this means that my 23 and 27 Mavericks don't stink anymore. <laughs> No, I think the Mavericks got good, and from all intent, it looks like the Knicks are going to put a huge push on for Durant. Yeah, seems like. Where does Davis go? Oh, yeah, I forgot about Toronto him. if Kawhi leaves. Really? I could I see that. I mean, they that. could get him now because it doesn't affect them on that. that I mean, I think if you have to make the now. trade, and some, I think the asking price from the Pelicans is going to be a young roster player, and I don't think the Raptors want to give that up. Yeah, it's going to be Ananobi or Siakam. And they don't want to do that. Especially not with the way Siakam's played. No, 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 no. Um, no, but see, like, I think for the Raptors, I think really what you have to look at is, I think Kaylee's right. They, they are going to ask for a roster player, but, it, I mean, if you can get them for free in the offseason. Yeah, like, and, they, it's and a they're not allowed move, to I put guess. their 2020 draft number one pick up, are they? Because Don't they use so. the 2019 one for Kawhi. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. how it works, isn't it? Yeah, it was like a projected yeah. first rounder. It, 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 it's weird in basketball. Yeah. Um, that's all that we have for today. We've covered a whole bunch of stuff. Whole bunch it was of great having Ryan here to yes, talk. Fun. Yes, thank you for coming. No on. problem. Thanks for having. I me. actually like doing this trade whenever we have a big wrestling event around because it's fun to come on and talk to you guys in your wheelhouse, and yep. it's fun to have you here in ours. Oh yeah. Because. The opinions get not that they get stale in the booth, but me and Johnny and Sean all sort of have our own natural biases. Yeah. Well, I'm still waiting. Shakes things yeah. up. I'm still waiting. <laughs> and I'm looking at him right now. Yeah. We can't have the argument anymore because we were wrong, and there's no other way to put it. <laughs> do you guys, do you guys want to do a double today? We can. Yeah. No, unfortunately, I'm. Uh, past my time here so all right all right guys uh, that's it for us thank you for listening in on chsr 979 fm broadcasting out of fredericton you will hear us again uh monday from two to three alternatively you can hear me and sean tomorrow on austv.ca as unb plays mount allison at 2 p.m on saturday and we'll see you guys on monday